Welcome back. Now, let's look at temporary physical change. Now, we are going to carry out a procedure or an experiment that's going to help us uh, know what this kind of change is. Put a spatula of zinc oxide in the test tube and uh, heat the test tube until no further change occur. Allow it to cool, record your observation in the table below. Repeat the experiment using wax and iron. So this is the table in which in which you are supposed to uh, record your observation. We are having a solid of which the solid here is zinc oxide, wax and iron. So you are supposed to record your observation when this is cool, heated, and when it is cooled. So you are supposed to uh, record what you really observe. Now, when zinc oxide is heated, the color changes from white to yellow. So we have zinc oxide. Then we have zinc oxide. So this one you heat zinc oxide. Then when you cool zinc oxide. Now, zinc oxide is basically white. Then we have this idea. Now what happens is that you heat zinc oxide, the color changes from white to yellow. It remains to be zinc oxide, yes, but the color just changes from white to yellow. Now this one is hot and this is cold. Now red. You cool this zinc oxide, the color is going to revert back to white. In other words, you look at this one, no new substance is formed. You just heat it, it changes color. When you leave, leave it in the air to cool, it's going to go back to that. Uh, it's only in color. And that's what is realized. We show this zinc oxide, but I've just uh, drawn on the board here. Another one which we can talk about here is wax. Just the normal wax we have at home, common in instrument. So we have solid wax. Then we have liquid wax. Heat, cool. Now, when you heat solid wax, is going to change into liquid wax, but the color here, nothing is going to. If you drink that wax into the atmosphere for some time, it will just solidify and go back to the wax. No new substance is formed. The third example is iodine. And I think we've led uh, we've dealt with so much iodine uh, experiment. Iodine, and this is solid. Then, heat and cool iron. Iron vapor. So these are dark crystals. Dark crystals. While this one is purple vapor. Now, if you take iron, you heat iron. Iron is going to turn into a uh, white uh, vapor which is purple. But now, if you take that purple vapor, you leave it in the air, it is going to turn back into iron soil. So in other words, what's happening here, no new substance is going to be formed when it is cold. And these are three examples that are supposed to be uh, representing the physical, temporary physical change, or rather physical temporary change. Now, heating of zinc oxide was an early question. does not lead to formation of a new substance, as you have already explained, and as you have already seen, according to this equation. Cooling reverses the changes these substances undergo. A change that can be easily reversed, and in which no new substance is formed, is called temporary physical change.
called temporary physical change. And that one makes us to talk about the characteristic of temporary physical change. One, they can easily reverse. That means you can go forward, backward, easily reverse. If you would really hit it, come to the side. If you pull it, come to the side. So they can easily be reversed. Now, another one, no new substance is formed. You see, there's nothing new formed here. It's iron, iron. No new substance is formed. Now, the mass of the substance does not change. So if this was 4 grams, when it comes back, it just be 4 grams. Nothing. They are not accompanied by net change or other net heat change. In other words, there's no heat involved, there's no heat absorbed. So there's no change. No heat is going to be involved, evolved, and no heat, or rather, evolved heat means it's going to be produced. So when I'm going for the uh, reaction in this case, you can find that sometimes it can be uh, absorbed or can be given out. But in this case, nothing of that sort happens. The second one, we're going to talk about what we call temporary chemical change. In temporary chemical change, we are going to see what happens when copper 2 sulfate crystals are heated. Put a spatula full of copper 2 sulfate solution in a dry test tube too, and set up a water from below. And now, these are anhydrous. So, hydrated, fully hydrated, uh, yes, hydrated, which is blue, hydrated copper 2 sulfate, so that you can get that water. So, this hydrated, you put it here, then you deliver the tube, then you have another test tube on the other side. So, and remember, I told you about hydrated and hydrous. And hydrous, which means no water, and hydrated means presence of water. So, in other words, what we are doing here, we are talking about copper sulfate with water crystals. So, or rather with water crystals, not water crystals, but water crystallization. Hit the copper 2 sulfate gently until there's no further change. Disconnect the delivery tube and then continue heating for a while. Then stop up the boiling tube. Allow it to, to cool and record the observation. Divide the solid into two portions. Put the portion into two separate test tubes. Put the thermometer into the first test tube. Measure the, uh, and record the temperature of the solid. Using a dropper, add about 3 to 4 drops of tap water into the test tube. Now, take the temperature of this resultant mixture. Place, mix the thermometer in the second portion. Measure and record the temperature of the solid. Add 2 to 3 drops of the colorless liquid. We're going to talk about the colorless liquid. You see, when you heat, then the vapor is going to go through this delivery tube and then it's going to collect here as a colorless liquid. So this is the colorless. When we talk about how the colorless liquid, so this is the colorless liquid we're talking about. So take temperature and complete the experiment. Yes. And add two to three drops of the colorless liquid collected during heating. Take the temperature of the Zatan's mixture. Repeat the experiment to see the crystal of copper 2 chloride. Now, we find that hydrated copper 2 sulfate contains what we call water for pressurization. And uh, when it heats, it decomposes. In other words, it decomposes into copper 2 sulfate salt product and water. So, hydrated copper to sulfate to give you what we call anhydrous copper to sulfate plus water. And this water is photo crystallization. So this one is blue. Well, this one is round. Now, 
You look at this one, it's a new substance that has been formed. And there are two of them. And uh, just to find out, okay, water is now separated from this one. And if you measure the mass, if you determine the mass of this and water superficial, it is less than this initial because this one contains the mass of the superficial So they are going to see that. Now when it decomposes to white copper sulfate, powder and water. The white copper two sulfate does not contain uh, water crystallization and it is said to be anhydrous, like this one. So, uh, hydrated copper two sulfate, in other words, water, just you can hear, this is blue, this is white, this is water. On cooling, the copper two sulfate does not gain the original color of blue, it remains white. In other words, on cooling, this one does not change to blue. Means white. So similarly, pink copper two chloride can also undergo to hydrated pink to blue when heated to form. Um, so on cooling, copper two chloride does not regain its uh, original color. So we are going to stop there. Next time, I pick from here. Thank you.